There is a vast number of indigenous groups of people in the Philippines with diverse cultures, languages, and beliefs. It is unbelievable that despite all the colonization and occupancy of the aliens, even major issues that the country faces and catastrophes, indigenous communities prove that they are invulnerable and indestructible, having their identities intact. In a wide-scale indigenous community in the Philippines, one of the prominent and widely known indigenous people is the Iris. But why then? During primary education, we are taught that there were three major settlers in our country, the Malays, Indones, and the Negritos. It is believed that the Negritos migrated here in the Philippines by land bridges winding back 30,000 years ago. And now, through the gliding of time, the Iris that what we know today are the dominant descendants of the Negritos. They can be found in the circle of Luzon, particularly in the central region, even from the start. The Iris are known for being great hunters. They already have this kind of jungle survival skill as a way of their living, wherein their source of alimentation can be attained through it supplemented by agriculture. Up to these days, it is still present particularly they are living in isolated areas which are far from modernization. As a part of their culture, both men and women are trained for hunting at a young age. They use traps, knives, and bows and arrows which are used for a specific purpose. They are also wanderers. Even in the modern days, we can see the Iris roaming in some places in Luzon. Sometimes they are seen with their crafts for them to be sold and their common products are sweet potatoes, bananas, and corns. Before, they used to move from one place to another for them to have a good location that is rich in resources. From there, building temporary shelters for themselves is easy, by using sticks and palm leaves. In terms of their belief, environmental spirits are their guide for their lives. Besides their belief in a supreme being such as Apotna for the idols of Mount Pinatubo, they are also animist. It is a belief of good and bad spirits are governing the environment like the bodies of water, land, and sky. Despite colonial religious influences, their traditional beliefs are well maintained. Having dark toned skin which makes it a prominent characteristic of them. Behind it is their colorful appreciation of art. They are skilled in weaving and plating which are used by them for their traditional attire. Furthermore, the musical heritage of Iris is still prevailing. Several types of ensembles are used to create rhythms, but these days, the use of materials that makes resonating and echoing sounds such as tins is functional for them to produce music. They accompany their music with dances imitating the movements of animals. Inside their community, we witness that their customs are overly lively, but still, they cannot escape the reality. Parang iniisip nila na ano, habaho ka, pero hindi naman. Lagi kang magpapabango ng kulong kasi kanya yung anak ko parang ano kanya sensitive sa ano, yung mabaho. Kaya sabi ko po kahit ita kami, hindi naman kami mabaho. Goro, yun na, turing hayop kami, baka patay na lang. Eh, hindayin mo na lang po yung itaboy kami, wala kaming laban. Pagka inararo kami ng bulldozer yan, aalis na kami. Hindi naman po pagkatanim maan agad kaya minsan ano, tapos din po kami. Sabi ko sa amin, ka, sa akin, huwag ka mag-enroll, wala naman yung pag-aaral mo. Dito ka rin naman babagsak sa, ano, sa, sa bundok. Hindi ka rin naman makakapagtapos. According to United Nations, issues of violence and brutality, continuing assimilation policies, marginalization, dispossession of land, forced removal or relocation, denial of land rights, impacts of large-scale development, abuses by military forces and armed conflict, and a host of other abuses are a reality for indigenous communities around the world. And part of it is our fellow ITES.
Magandang araw po sa inyo. Ako nga po pala si Erkeso Sobra, isang katutubong ita na maagang namulat sa realidad ng buhay. Sanggol pa lang ako, hindi ko na naramdaman ng erga ng isang nanay. Dahil nung pinanganak ako, namatay na siya. Sa bahay lang namin ako pinanganak. Sab sa akin ng lolo ko, taga Florida raw kami. Masagana at payapa daw ang pamumuhay doon. Ngunit dahil sa pagsabog ng pinatubo, umalis kami. Ngayon, sa kapatagan kami ng Tarlac nakatira, kasama ang kapwa namin Aita, dito kami tumira simula nung sumabog ang pinatubo. Hindi na kami nakabalik dahil mahirap lang kami. Halos dito sa amin, parehas lang ang aming pamumuhay. Ang tatay ko ay isang magsasaka. Malit lang ang kanyang sinisweldo sa pagsasaka, kaya kailangan namin magtipid araw-araw. Nung isang araw, may mga pumasok dito sa amin, tapos kinausap yung pinuno namin dahil may gagawin raw sa lupa. Sabi ng tatay ko, you should do daw na ginagawa malapit sa amin, aabot dito hanggang sa lupa kung saan kami nakatira. Ayaw ng tatay ko, pero sabi ng pinuno, mas magiging ayos raw kami dito kapag pumayag kami. Hindi ko alam yung mga yon, pero gusto ko pa rito. Ayaw ko pa umalis dito kasi dito kami nabubuhay. Great job na ako. Kahit mahirap, mag-aaral pa rin ako dahil dito nakasulalay ang aking nabukasan. Kahit minsan, pinagtatawanan kami sa school, hindi pa rin ako titigil. Sabi sa akin noon, uling, yung iba unggoy. Masakit pero kahit pinagtatawanan kami, mag-aaral pa rin kami. Minsan, binibenta namin yung mga baon namin ng kamote para lang may pera kami. Pagtos ng school, minsan magtatanim kami ng kamote o kaya saging, o kaya mais. Pero minsan wala, kaya papasok ng school kahit gutom kami kasi hindi naman agad naan yung mga natanim namin. Gusto ko rin matapos ng pag-aaral kasi gusto kong tulungan yung mga aita na katulad ko. Ngayon, sabi ni na paalisin raw kami dito. Kaya nagdadasal ako na sana hindi mangyari yun. Dito lang kami nabubuhay kasi kapag pinaalis kami dito, baka maghiwalay-hiwalay kami tapos baka lalo kami maghihirap. Dito sa amin, kahit wala kaming pera, pwede kami mabuhay. Doon sa bayan, baka hindi kami mabuhay. Regaza is not the only one experiences poverty, witnesses land dispossession, faces racial discriminations, and the likes. Many members of the other communities also experience those. It exists repetitively. But it's not too late for us to protect them, just like how we treat our families, our friends, our fellow human beings. They are being ignored multiple times, and that is the sad reality. And from there, they need to be heard. Ang mga aita ang nangangalaga sa ating kalikasan. Mas kaya nilang putiaktaan ang ating kapaligiran. Hanga ko sa mga aita. Pupunta sila sa lugar namin upang ibenta ang kanilang mga produkto tulad ng kamote at mga kakaibang mais. Tapos ibibenta lang nila yun ng mura. Napansin ko sa mga aita kahit ganun ang buhay nila ay masaya pa rin sila. Makulay at makulay din ang kanilang kultura. Tsaka, masasabi ko rin na sila yung tunay na Pilipino. Wala pa man tayo rito. Isa sa mga naunang nangalaga sa bansa natin ang mga aita. Siguro, kung hindi dahil sa kanila, ibang iba siguro ang Pilipinas ngayon, no? Sa totoo, Sen, dapat nga, tularan natin ang mga katangin ng mga aita. Kasi pag mapagkumbaba, patigit sa lahat, madiskarte sa lahat. Kaya taas no ako sa kanila. Stop ignoring their presence and perhaps they do better than you. Therefore, join me, be their voice, let us spread awareness. I will fight for them. I will fight for them as well. I will also fight for them. I will fight for the Aitas. 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 I support Aita people. I will fight for the Aitas. 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 I will fight with you.